Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It's Tuesday, March 8th, 2022. I'm Andrew Hansen, ready to break down this six-game NBA DFS slate for you. Thanks for tuning in. I'm excited about this slate. It's interesting. We've got three early games right at 7 o'clock. Then we go 7.30, 8, and 10. We have eight of the 12 teams involved in a back-to-back. And then three totals over 230. But I'm not necessarily in love with all three of those 230 games. So let's work through it one at a time and get everybody ready for DraftKings and FanDuel. All right, let's start with Brooklyn and Charlotte. Now, this is the total I like at 239.5. Brooklyn favored by three. Both of these teams on an island. And you've got about everything you want here. Both of these teams are top 12 in pace. They are you know, at least average offensively, and they're below average defensively. Interesting, they're both 32 and 33 today. What could you have gotten for odds on that if you'd made that wager before the season that they'd be tied at, after 65 games with that record? Well, you got to figure that Brooklyn uh, is ready to, to turn it around and, and get hot here and, you know, get that record back above 500. They have Kyrie and KD out there, of course, tonight. They will not have Ben Simmons. He's not quite ready yet. And LaMarcus Aldridge is out. We also have Cam Thomas, questionable. And then on the Charlotte side, we have uh, Jalen McDaniels, questionable. He's been out since January. And then Book, Book Knight is out. So starting with Brooklyn, uh, KD here is my favorite payup option on the slate. He's expensive at 11-1 on DraftKings, but he's coming off 37-6-8 and eight against Boston. He had 38-5-3 and three against Charlotte earlier this year. And you know, KD kind of took the lead uh, vis-a-vis Kyrie against Boston, and I, I just trust him a little bit more. Really like the matchup. So I'm willing to pay up for him. After that on Brooklyn, no must plays for me. Uh, Bruce Brown at 5,300 on DraftKings is solid as a small forward. Curry, I think, continues to get squeezed a little bit on shots with Kyrie and KD out there. And then Drummond is interesting on FanDuel at 4,500. You know, he hasn't been playing big minutes. With Lamarck Aldridge, Aldridge out, does he get a few more? If he does, then this could be the day that Drummond finally pays off value. He hasn't done so in a while. He's got a good matchup against Charlotte. They're not strong against centers. You could go with Claxon off the bench, though, for a GPP play. Under 4,000 on both sites. Uh, and, of course, I say GPP because he's hard to trust. Been very inconsistent with Coach Nash at the helm. Uh, after that, Dragic is a solid option. Uh, right around 4,000 on both sites, coming off 22 minutes. Wouldn't feel great about him getting 6 or 7x, but could be a punt play you look at around that 5x mark. We've got a fair number of choices, though, on DraftKings today around 4,000. So not my first choice. And don't think I'll get to Mills or James Johnson. All right, with Charlotte, uh, you know, I like the game environment for them as well uh, due to that that fast pace, below average defense on both sides. Uh, so you got to look at the big three of, here of Lamelo. Rogier and Bridges, they would be my primary targets. I like that Bridges is the cheapest of the three on both sites. And I do like his upside. 6,900 on FanDuel as a small forward. The only problem is that he's only a small forward there. And that's, once again, a crowded position for me today on FanDuel. Uh, not so much at point guard and shooting guard. I think it's a little harder to, to get... Uh, some variations there because there aren't as many attractive targets. After Bridges, Rogier has been playing better than LaMelo. If he's hitting his threes, he can get you 50 fantasy points and 6x. If not, then he probably won't. Uh, LaMelo, how about that game against Cleveland where he only played eight minutes? He had four fouls, and then it was a blowout in the second half, so he didn't go back in. Um, you know, good good environment for him. You know, maybe this is when he turns it back up, but he'd be GPP only for me. Don't think I'll get to PJ Washington or Plumley or Montrez. Uh, Cody Martin is interesting at 3,500 on DraftKings. 
Uh, he's been getting good minutes lately. That's a solid price. The only thing I want to mention here is let's not forget that Isaiah Thomas is on that bench and he didn't play in the last game. But if he does play, then he could throw off the usage for the other bench guys as well as the starting guards perhaps a little bit. Um, you know, I don't think I want to play IT because he might not play, but he makes me hesitate a little bit on guys like Cody Martin and Ubre because if he does play, I think they get fewer shots. Um, in any event, though, let's get Katie out there, maybe another one-off, and then let's head to the next 7 o'clock game. That one is Cleveland and Indiana. Much lower total here, 223.5. Cleveland favored by three. Huge news here. We've got Jared Allen out along with Levert, and then Rondo questionable for Cleveland. On the Indiana side, we have Goga questionable along with Lance Stevenson and Chris Duarte. So much lower total here with these teams below average in pace. Cleveland has that awesome defense. They're fourth. Uh, these teams are both below average offensively. You know, the only thing we really like is that Indiana's defense is 26th. So I wouldn't mind uh, someone from the Cavs, especially with Jarrett Allen out. He's missed eight games this year, and when he has sat – they basically have tried every combination you could think of. They've had Dean Wade start, Ed Davis, Kevin Love. They, they've all gotten spot starts. Uh, so that's the question mark for me is who's that fifth starter tonight to go along with Garland, Okoro, Markinen, and Mobley. Um, regardless of that information, we don't have it yet here early afternoon. I am interested in Mobley and Markinen. Uh, I think they should pick up the slack from Allen, and they're both fair prices. Mobley at 8100 on FanDuel is a little more than you'd like to spend, but he does have the potential to pay that off. We saw in the last game when Allen went out, he ended up with 20 and 17, so that would certainly do the trick. Uh, Markinen, you know, 5700 on DraftKings is pretty nice. Uh, keep an eye, though, on that bench and who that fifth starter is. Dean Wade, if he plays in the 3K range, you know, he'd probably be added to the GPP pool for me. Don't think I would trust him in cash. Ed Davis, uh, 3,100 DraftKings, 35 FanDuel. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if he hits value. And then Kevin Love certainly has, has shown the upside around 6K to pay that off. Um, with the guards, you know, Garland is playable on FanDuel for me at 8,000. But I also want to mention the backups. The backup guards against Indiana have done quite well recently, you know, and in this matchup. Rondo actually played really well against them a while back. And then Ish Smith did it most recently. So Washington and Sykes and company have not been getting it done on that Indiana bench against the guards. But we don't know about Rondo if he's playing and he's got that toe issue. Um, if he plays, you know, he's going to be in the pool for me for GPPs, not my favorite option. If he doesn't play, you could look at Goodwin, especially on FanDuel where he's only 3,800. Over on the Indiana side, we've got a big three over there of Brogdon, Halliburton, and Heald. Brogdon is my favorite today out of that group under 8,000 on both sites. Uh, and then with the bigs, I can't recommend anybody there because we don't know about Goga. And last time out, Jackson started but didn't play much. Goga was uh, a key guy off the bench, and they certainly are going to need as much size as possible against Mobley and company. Uh, but then we've got Jalen Smith, who's been playing well, uh, but coming off the bench. And Brissett. Uh, basically, all of them will take a hit if Goga is playing. And then I don't think I'm going to go to anybody else, regardless of if Lance or Duarte are playing or not. Not going to go to Sykes, Washington, or Taylor. All right, game three. The other 7 o'clock game is Phoenix and Orlando. This total is 221, but I could see it going over here. I think this is a sneaky game uh, for some fantasy points. Phoenix is favored by six, and it, it's a front end for both teams. 
And we know that a lot of big hitters for Phoenix are out, so they're not going to be as efficient offensively with Chris Paul, Booker, and Cam Johnson out tonight. Um, but we've got some real value here on DraftKings on, on the Phoenix side. Campaign is only 5,300, Shamit 37, and DeAndre Ayton 66. I like all three of those guys on DraftKings. More expensive on FanDuel, but playable. You know, we've got Orlando in their 23rd ranked defense, a team going the wrong direction at 16 and 49. So I'd like to get some exposure to Phoenix, and those are my three primary targets. Bridges and Crowder could certainly do it tonight, but I don't think you need to go there at those prices. And then the bench unit, Holiday is playable for me, around 4,000. Torrey Craig, I could see him hitting value at 39. Uh, when he gets 20 minutes plus, not going to go to Biombo or JaVale. Uh, but I will have some exposure to to that group, uh, especially the guards, Payne, Shamit, and Holiday. On the Orlando side, we have Wendell Carter Jr. available to come back after missing a couple games with illness. And then Jalen Suggs is questionable with an ankle. He did not practice yesterday or go through shoot-around today. And since it is a front end, I, I have the feeling that he'll sit tonight. They've announced that Fultz will play tonight, but not tomorrow. So I figure Suggs will sit today. Fultz will be in the rotation, and then that'll flip tomorrow. Now, if Suggs does sit, we may see another start for RJ Hampton, or maybe they go a little bigger and they keep Okiki out there, uh, assuming Wendell Carter Jr. is back in the lineup to go along with Anthony Wagner and Bamba. Um, as for playing anybody on Orlando, I really don't think I will get to that starting lineup. I, I just prefer that Phoenix side. And if Hampton is starting again, he would be a GPP option. 3,800 on both sides. He played 34 minutes in the last game, only one for seven. Uh, but he's got the, the, uh, the ability to pay that off. Uh, Fultz. You know, I, I want to see him increase his minutes. He's been right in that uh, high teens range, so I won't go to him yet. And then Mo Wagner, really nice game last time out. Good price on DraftKings at 3300 but tough defense on the other side on that bench with Biombo and JaVale McGee. And I do think that the presence of Wendell Carter Jr. could negatively impact Wagner tonight. All right, before we get to the second half of the slate, just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, hit that thumbs up if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us on Twitter, at DFS Coach Talk. You can find me on Twitter, at Language Olympic. And if you want my lineups tonight, just go to DFSCoachTalk.com. Sign up for whichever membership you'd like. And then I will be posting those uh, just after 6.30 tonight. We'll have the... DraftKings Coaches Clipboard, full lineups on FanDuel and Yahoo for your cash and GPP contests. All right, let's go to 7.30. We've got New Orleans and Memphis, and this is the beginning of the TNT doubleheader. Nice, healthy total here of 231.5. Memphis favored by 5.5 at home. It's a front end for New Orleans, and the news just came out early afternoon that Brandon Ingram is questionable with a hamstring. So that could change everything for New Orleans. You know, it's a it's a tough matchup against Memphis's top 10 defense, but we like that Memphis is number four in pace, uh, which helps build this high total of 231 and a half. Um, without Ingram, there's going to be a lot of interest in CJ McCollum. And the last two times, the last time these teams played, he went for 30 points, six rebounds, and seven assists. And that was with Brandon Ingram in the lineup. So I think CJ will get as many shots as he can handle. And uh, uh, certainly a pay up option that I have squarely in my sights. Who's going to fill in for Ingram? Uh, I think it'll most likely be Snell or Najee Marshall, both in the mid 3K range on both sites. Najee Marshall is a lot better per minute in terms of fantasy points. So he's the guy I'm going to lean towards. 
He is a small forward only, though, on both sites. Don't think I'll get to the rest of the starters for New Orleans. I'll probably just go with C.J. McCollum and or that next starter, Snell or Najee Marshall. Uh, Hernan Gomez is an interesting price off the bench on DraftKings only at 3700 He's been playing low 20s minutes and hitting that value at, at that price. Not going to play him on FanDuel where he's 5600 And I don't think I'll get to Alvarado. Graham could get a couple more shots as well. So GPP option there. Over on the Memphis side, got to start the discussion with Jaw, especially after last week. The last time he was on TNT, uh, I had the pleasure of attending that game in Boston with our analytics guru, John Wehausen. We were in Boston for the MIT Sloan Business School Sports Analytics Conference, which was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed attending that with John. And we went to this game the night before it started. And Ja, he started out with two points in the first quarter, but he finished with 38, 4, and 7, really took over in the fourth quarter. Uh, he sort of had a back and, back and forth with Tatum, a lot of fun to watch. But the alley-oop dunk he scored in transition with the left was just tremendous. And we were seated behind the other basket, so we had a great view of the play unfolding. Man, what an athlete. What a fun guy to watch in person. So, um, you know, really fond memories of that, but a little pricey here, 10-7 on DraftKings. He could certainly do it, uh, but if I had to pick right now between Jaw and KD, I'm going to go with Durant. Looking at the rest of the Memphis side, Bain is playable for me in that mid-6K range. And Steven Adams has really stepped up in this matchup against his former team. He's averaging 41.3 DraftKings points. So for 6,300, his price tag there, that's almost 7X. And he was awesome in his last game against Houston, putting up 55 fantasy points. Um, you know, he's playable there, but there are a handful of center options that I like. Uh, so on my first couple of lineups, he'll probably get lost in the shuffle there. And then in in uh, in terms of the Memphis bench, I kind of like Brandon Clark on FanDuel at 4,500. He had a game against New Orleans earlier with 18 and 8. Uh, and so I, I trust him the most off the bench. I uh, don't think I'll get to anyone else for Memphis tonight. Tillman is available, uh, by the way, but he has not been getting many minutes. All right, let's move to 8 o'clock. We have Milwaukee and OKC. Milwaukee favored by 13.5 tonight with a 230 total. And this is the 230 number that I don't really trust. I would go under on that one. When these two teams played earlier, it was Milwaukee 96 to 89, so not even close. And... A lot of the key guys for OKC are out. Giddy, Dort, Kenrich Williams, Ty Jerome, Muscala, and Favors. So a lot of their young talent and their veterans. Uh, you're left with Shea and then a bunch of guys who really don't send much fear into the hearts and minds of, of Milwaukee. Uh, you've got Mann, Wiggins, Baisley, and Pokashevsky who started the last game. Isaiah Roby is questionable with a back, and he's been playing well, so he's a key figure. Uh, I'll come back to him. On the Milwaukee side, though, we've got Grayson Allen out and Wesley Matthews available to play. So Grayson Allen last game played 32 minutes. That opens up uh, a lot of opportunity. The last time he sat, Jordan Awara started against Philly, played 34 minutes, and got up 12 shots. So Nawara is the kind of guy that I like in this matchup. Uh, he's a good price, 3100 on DraftKings. Fan, a power forward only, by the way. 4000 on FanDuel. But he's one of those tweeners who could possibly start and then could possibly get minutes with the second unit, even if, even if it is a blowout. So Nawara is in play for me. You got to figure Wesley Matthews will soak up, soak up some of those Grayson Allen minutes as well. Bembry could get a little bit of a bump. 
Uh, but I don't plan to go with the main starters. When they played OKC earlier, Giannis had a big game. Portis was very good. But 12000 for Giannis in a game like this, it's a front end for both teams. Uh, you know, just could envision him playing well through three quarters, and then that's it. Uh, Milton coming off 44 actual points against Phoenix. Great to see that. I love watching him shoot. Uh, Portis is a, is a fair price in the low 6K range. So any of those starters could go off, but I, I'm preferring to look at the value here, possibly Nawara. Also want to mention Ibaka heading back to his old stopping grounds in OKC, coming off a strong game against Phoenix, 14 and 10. I like his price on DraftKings where he's 3,400 power forward or center eligible. Getting back to OKC, uh, Shea is their guy, but at 10-6, I don't want to go there. He struggled against Drew Holiday and company earlier in the season, going for 17-6-3. and three. Uh, Roby, though, is playable, you know, given the way he's been playing. 5,300 on DraftKings and then 66 on FanDuel. If he sits, you could look at Pokashevsky. He's doing enough in the 5K range to pay it off. And then Saar off the bench, 3,400 on DraftKings as a center. He's coming off 11-9 and nine against Utah, and that would be enough to get it done. But again, you know, looking at that matchup, uh, if he's going to go against Ibaka, I probably would lean Ibaka at the same price uh, and give the edge to the veteran back in OKC. All right, last game of the night. We have the second game of the TNT doubleheader. Clippers and Golden State. 10 o'clock tip. Golden State favored by 6.5 at home with a total here of 221.5. Front end for the Clippers. They've got Washington at home tomorrow. Back-to-back -back for Golden State. They had the, the B team travel to Denver last night and put up a good fight. Lost a close one, 131-124. to 124. Injuries here. We've got uh, Covington out for the Clippers, which is big. And then Golden State, uh, we're going to have the key guys back who did not make the trip or did not play, Steph, Clay, Wiggins, and then question marks with Otto Porter, Peyton, and Iguodala. So let's start with the Clippers here. Um, Covington being out is, is big because lately he's been impacting the minutes for Morris. Morris has not been getting big minutes or playing well. Uh, so I think Morris uh, will go closer to 30 minutes tonight. And at 5000 on FanDuel, he's now uh, at an attractive price. Not sure if I'll get to him tonight. I actually really like Batum next to him because Batum is only 3700 on DraftKings, 38 on FanDuel. And... You know, he's been kind of uh, sort of trending back up a little bit and playing similar minutes to Morris. And if he gets a bump and plays mid-20s or higher minutes, it's a lot easier for him to, to pay it off at that price than Morris. And when these two teams played most recently, Batum was 14-8 and eight in what could be the same starting lineup uh, against what could be the same starting lineup without Draymond. Uh, so you, you like those forwards better uh, without Draymond, of course. Uh, looking forward to seeing him coming back soon, but it looks like next week at the earliest for that. So Batum is in play for me. Terrence Mann is a good good price. Could be the last guy in uh, to the cash lineup. Uh, Reggie has uh, been a little inconsistent. 86 is pretty tough on DraftKings. 71 on FanDuel, if he if he has one of his big nights, obviously he can hit value there. Not going to go to Zubats. I think he's priced up a little bit too high tonight. Uh, and then with the the Clippers bench, without Covington, you could see some more minutes for Hood and Ojale. Uh, but I would look at Luke Kennard or Coffee as a GPP flyer if you want to if you want to hit that price range. Uh, one of those guys could certainly get it done. I do prefer Batum though in that in that sub four K price range. And then let's let's look at Golden State. They're the flip side of the Phoenix squad, 
who I highlighted as value on DraftKings. Golden State has a lot of value on FanDuel. Steph is only 9,400. Clay, 55. And Wiggins, 59. So I could very well have some exposure to that group. Looney played really well last night against Denver. 29 minutes, double-double. Uh, and he's actually been decent in double-double, in, in back-to-backs lately, the second night. Uh, but this is about as tough as it gets to go from Denver to anywhere else. Uh, so, you know, I'm hesitant on him, but wouldn't be shocked if he pays it off. Uh, and then we'll see about that fourth starter. Uh, could it be Kaminga? Uh, you know, we just don't know about Otto Porter at this point. Uh, Iguodala probably still out. Uh, then you've got, you know, Juan Toscano Anderson as a possibility. Bielitsa should be in the rotation again. Poole paid off that price tag last night, didn't he? Uh, chalk value play that hit. He'll be back on the bench, though. I probably won't go there. Damian Lee should be out there as well. Cheap option. And then Moody, he got hot, uh, but he may just disappear from the rotation tonight. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. Um, you know, I don't think the injury possibilities here, the spot starter, will affect things too much for me tonight. Um, cause in terms of this being the, the last game and do we want a late swap? Uh, I think I'll probably have clay or Wiggins in the lineup, you know, and Batum, I'll probably have that set my decision on if I want them or not. Uh, Kuminga could be a guy that you might want to get into the mix, but, uh, I, I think it's unlikely. Uh, so I think I'm going to, I'm probably going to focus on those core guys in that cheaper price range. And, you know, depending on the news earlier in the night, uh, make my pivots before we get to that eight o'clock Milwaukee and OKC game. All right. So again, if you want the lineups for me tonight, dfscoachtalk.com, love to have you join. And I appreciate all your support. Uh, good luck with this six game slate. And on behalf of the entire DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. We'll see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS.